busy schedule. I wonder if I've got time to go and record that next time. What's the name of the day? 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 Next reading. Okay, where are you? Just grab my water. Hi, it's Matilda. It's so nice to get your shirt up. Two professional middle aged women in the same room after a long day? Well, when they're a medium and an astrologer, you get the sassy Sears. <laughs> hey, the day is over. The day is over. We're done. We're done. <laughs> How was your day, Laurie? I'm assuming it's been really good because I'm traveling. Uh, I know you're traveling, but, you know. I know. But it's good. It's good. Good, 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 good. So. It's been a long week, though, hasn't it? It has been a long week. There's been when so I say much a long week, I don't mm-hmm. think they added extra days into the week. Although no, but we lost hours. <laughs> <laughs> Still you catching up from hours. that. Yeah, oh, lost an hour. hours. A whole yeah. hour, Laurie. Um, it just feels like the days are short, mm-hmm. and the work amount is a lot. Well, you know, I warned people that the first three months. Once we got into that second week of January, that it was just off to the races. And and then we're going to kind of hit a wall. But, um, like, things are going to go into a weird kind of slow motion. But for right now, it is really fast. So yeah. I wouldn't beat ourselves up. Like, that's the one thing I've been learning to let go. I don't know about you, but I've just been like, I can get done what I can get done. And I cannot get done what I cannot get done. That's how Period. I feel right now. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I feel like I'm betwixt and between because I'm about to travel myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and there just doesn't seem to be enough hours in the day. Mm-hmm. And it takes, I am, I've got to have a tidy space. I don't know about you, but I've got to have a tidy space. You're Virgo raising. Yeah. And I can't function if things aren't away or tidy or and I'm going to make a confession that um, I've just been into my kitchen and I have not moved the plates to the dishwasher from last night. <gasps> I know. No. I know. I did a week's worth of, worth of dishes yesterday. Wow. I'm a slob, though. I I need a wife. I don't I don't want mm-hmm. wifely duties. I just need you know, just like when I was a wife. I made yeah. sure everybody else was okay. I need, I need, a, I need somebody to do that for me. But Maybe see, then we have to, yeah, you know, we have to go pay for it. Men are like, oh, they do that. I'm like, oh my God, they do know. so much unpaid labor. Have you ever dated in your 50s? I've had offers of men to come and be my slave. I mean, no kink shaming or anything like that, but <laughs> I could get a naked slave. <laughs> I'm not attracted to subservience. Me either. I'm, me either. I'd rather pay someone to come. I'm like, and could do you it. please put your pants on and just do the laundry? Yeah. Could you just not? Could you put it away? I don't want to see it. Yeah. Um, I don't know what they get out of it, but whatever. Dating in our fifties is so much fun. But it's uh, kind of like when you play video games. Did you know in some video games, like because I used to play World of Warcraft, and uh-huh. there's this cooking element in the game, and I played mostly by myself at first so like the first couple months i it was a way to just kind of blow off steam my kids were pretty young and so i do it for an hour and just like tune out the world and then i met and i quested along the way i didn't like do the big battles i was like gathering herbs and doing these little (laughs) side quests and i got to a really high level without all of the good armor or any of that so i meet this young person who had their character and they thought it was really funny that I'd got to a pretty high level without doing any of the fighting. They're like, uh-huh. how'd you do it? I was questing. I just went on quests. That's what I did. And so he decided he was going to teach me how to play. I was mm-hmm. like, okay. We start. And he goes, why aren't you cooking? And I was like, dude, I do that every day. I am playing a fantasy game. If I wanted to, <laughs> are you kidding? And he, that was his response. He goes, you get extra strength when you eat certain food. I'm like, oh, well, okay, fine. I'll do it. But I was like, why would I cook when I'm Where trying to, to dissociate? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. My fantasies have changed through the years. I, I fantasize mm-hmm. having somebody 
to change my bedding every other day or Mm -hmm. clean my house or put food on the table that I don't have to cook, but I only cook for myself. So it's it's not like it's hard. It's not like I've got young kids anymore that want seven different things. Exactly. It's different now. But yeah. Yeah, it's different now. We've got a guest. Uh, Oda, Oda. She's very happy. You notice she's smiling. I gave her a very special chewy treat. Because uh, the big box of treats I bought arrived she's, today. Uh, so she was thanking me because it's really good, gross stuff. Nice. Yeah, Oof. I'm not going to say what it is because it's it's disgusting, but dogs love it. Mm-hmm. It's not rawhide because that's too that's Rawhide's not good for very them. Dangerous, yeah, actually. yeah. So no, but it's something that's very yummy and really disgusting, and it's like mm-hmm. loving it. Right. I'm an awesome yes. grandma. Yeah, absolutely. So um, somebody was asking, how did we get? Um, do we have any good stories uh, to tell? War stories, or you know work stories how we got on our path what we've done in the past you were we thinking quite of a similar path we because do. i studied economics mm-hmm. and then went on to work i went i chose the government pathway mm-hmm. i actually studied european trade mm-hmm. which was at or european what was it yeah it was european trade just as the eu was opening up that's how i right. am Right, um, right, and right. I then made the decision to move away from Europe. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I studied economics. But when I had my children, so okay, bread and butter was communications. I used my mm-hmm. social economics experience to, or behavioral economics to use for communications. That's um, very cool. And I loved it. That's I love doing that. I had my own business for a really long time. I had a research mm-hmm. company for a long time. Cool. But I did jobs around my children. So I mm-hmm. living in Australia, I didn't have any family. So it's myself, mm-hmm. um, their father, and no mum, dad, no uncles, none of that. And my ex husband was away most of the time. He travelled overseas a lot. He had a job that he could literally take off to London on a Monday, do a meeting and come back that night because the meetings he did, he couldn't do over Skype. So it was a lot. So I had to work around my kids and I took a job, which we've discussed, in a cemetery. And this Mm -hmm. was a big cemetery in Melbourne Mm -hmm. that had a mausoleum, it had a chapel for services, it had a lawn area, it had a crematorium, had a Chinese gardens area. Um, So covered every faith, including Muslim graves and Jewish graves. Um, Mm -hmm. So my job was to take people around to show them to choose whatever area they wanted, the plot that they wanted, write the memorials, get the chapel ready. I even had to go through the crematorium on a lot of occasions to go and give cremated remains to people that came to collect them. And I Mm -hmm. do have a story from this. I'm going back well over 20 years before I Mm -hmm. was a professional medium. Mm -hmm. Remember, I've always been a medium. I've just not always done it professionally. Yep. And I didn't have a good grasp on stepping in and out of energies. I didn't mm-hmm. have that healthy ability, which takes a long time. And until you've mm-hmm. got that, it can be intrusive. Yeah. And a lady came to collect her late husband's remains, and she was much younger than him. Mm. And this is my first ever experience that I've had of um not my first experience because I'd had it before, but really, really vivid Mm -hmm. vision Mm -hmm. where he was doing the crocodile tear things. She was sobbing at having lost him, but she'd waited Mm -hmm. a year to collect his remains. Mm -hmm. Um, And he was making fun of her crying Um, and doing the whole cash sign, like he was showing me Uh... cash. Because he was saying she's not really sad. Mm-hmm. He, well, she, he maybe she shouldn't got, have been with such a young person then. Yeah, six of one and half a dozen I of the know. other. But that was usually the fair first, enough. But, 
Wow, that was that's my fun. first, wow, oh my gosh, mm-hmm. I've got to do something with this moment. Mm-hmm. And my kids were really tiny. So, yeah, yeah well over 20 years. Yeah. And uh, that's, funny. that's, yeah. Then I started going, okay, well, I'm either going to have to see a psychiatrist or start it's looking scary. for a mentor. Yeah. No, no, it is. It's scary when mm-hmm. you don't know. I picked know. up energies mm-hmm. a lot. I knew mm-hmm. that, like, I really did pick up a lot of energies and um, I loved working there. It's actually a very peaceful place. It, I don't get scared in places like that. Mm-hmm. No, The same I reason I don't actually get sad when people pass because I know I'm going to see them again. No, I don't either. Yeah. No, um, I learned that very, harsh. very young. No, yeah. I, I learned that very young because I've always talked to dead people. Yeah, they sh- they would walk out of my closet when I was like a little kid. Anytime any old person died, they'd show up, and mm-hmm. I wouldn't know until the next morning. Go, hey, mom, why was so and so over? Well, they weren't, Lori. Phone rings. Yeah. By the way, so and so died. You know? Yeah, I, yeah. It's it's a really weird situation. My first experience mm-hmm. ever. I think I was about eight or nine, and yeah. There was an old man in a uniform in oh, wow. um, my mum's spare, my mum's, my nan's spare bedroom. Mm-hmm. And I had no idea oh, who wow. this person was, but I was asleep in that room with my cousins mm-hmm. and everything. And he told me to shush, like he knew I could see him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it wasn't until years, I like I'd spoken to my mum and she's like, don't be silly, mm-hmm. you don't tell anyone that, you know, all of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um was at my cousin's house years later and I noticed the picture you know when you notice things when you get a bit older I was in my teens and I said who's that and she said well that's my granddad it's not your granddad so it was my grandmother's first husband who had actually died and he's buried in Germany because Mm. he died in the second world war War. Mm -hmm. um I had no idea who he was but he was obviously checking in on all the his grandchildren because my cousins were his grandchildren uh so yeah it was a bit it was a bit weird Right. But, it, yeah. Yeah. It was weird. I mean, look, I say it's a bit weird because I, I'm so used to it now. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's like, but when I, you're, but, yeah, but when it first happens, you don't realize other people can't do it either. You know, like, yeah. doesn't everybody? You know, I think the big so. wake up for me is that other people don't feel the mm-hmm. feelings that I feel. When mm-hmm. people say you see a soul, you mm-hmm. see a soul. People don't get that. Mm-hmm. That's a big eye opener. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it is. That's why I stick to what I stick with because I had too many traumatizing experiences. Not that I think <laughs> I would now, and I've had very good teachers teach me to, you know, manage it. But it it was a lot. Yeah, and when you had mental health challenges, like that was the other reason I really went the astrology route because I was on a long healing journey. And when you're sensitive to being called crazy, you know, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, but uh, had good, good help. But yeah, I worked in a cemetery too in 1999. Wow. Where mm-hmm. was that cemetery? That was the Lincoln Memorial Cemetery in Portland, Oregon, which is interesting. My dad actually built the mausoleums there and in, in another in the 70s. So I used to grow up going to cemeteries, not just with my great grandma to go visit mm-hmm. all the relatives. And that's just how it used to be done. You'd have a little picnic, talk to everybody. Um, I thought it was literally having conversations. Not that they were there, but, it, you know, I just would. I'd just sit and talk to my grandma who died when my mom was eight, you know, things like that. Just normal, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. My favorite story of the mausoleum building, though, was my dad. We went to give my dad lunch. I was about five. And he set me up in one of the mostly finished crypts because it was oh, yeah. just above the ground, kept me from moving around. I was eating my little cheese sandwich and I farted. Now, I have a Venus in Gemini in the eighth house, so I have a ridiculous relationship with death and dying, as in I I find it funny sometimes. I'm deeply empathetic, but there's humor in all things. So even at five years old, when I tooted, immediately I thought somebody was going to be buried with my fart. (laughs) And I couldn't stop laughing. 
to this day, if I go to that, because I've got a lot of family buried in there, if in interned, because they're in the mausoleums. But when I drive past it and I go, <laughs> you're so, I tooted. <laughs> tooted. And it stayed, I tooted. And that's what I told my mom. I was like, you tooted. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I could not get a job when I came back to the States could not people did not believe my work history because people didn't leave the states where i was from um unless they were in the military or government organization i worked private sector nobody wanted to trust email references because it Mm -hmm. was 98 99 but there was a job opening at the cemetery and my job was to help people decide on pre-planning okay Yeah. And I'm okay. I'm the best person to have those uncomfortable conversations with. I will not laugh, but I don't. You don't become not the end. No, because it's not the end. I've known that my whole life. Because again, dead people would come because if you can see them and feel them and talk to them, they're like, hey, how's it going? Yeah, Um, it's it's, it's a really weird mm -hmm. realization Mm -hmm. that makes the loss of those close to you easier. He is. And it doesn't mean you don't miss him. Like when my grandma died in 2010, I did not expect the level of grief I experienced. I did not. I grew up next to her. I had Mm -hmm. her. I was so blessed. I had her until I was 41 years old. Wow. Not many people get to have a grandma that long. And um, it. It hit me so hard. And we had talked for years before because her sister had lingered and she was terrified she would. And even though she was quite religious and didn't like me being an astrologer, I'd still pop in like, Grandma, you're in Aries. You get to go out, when you know, guns blazing. You get to go out on your terms. Don't worry about it. Where are you going when you die? Do you know? And she'd be like, I'm going to heaven. I said, well, then you will. Okay. Period. And she did. She she had a great passing. She got to say goodbye to everybody. But the movie Up came out that year, or at least came on to cable. And Ed Asner sounds like my grandfather, and Ellie's voice was like my grandmother's. Aww. Oh, my God. I had to walk out. Um, and it, it took me maybe eight years to just fully... Wow. I did not okay. realize it. Yeah. It, but she was such a support in my life. And mm-hmm. she wasn't a milk and cookies grandma. But she was your support. All. She yeah. taught me how to hire and fire. She taught me how to politically, all the skills I needed in life. And she was a bit of a hard ass, but I needed that. I loved that about her. So, you know, even when you have these gifts and no, it's not the end, it wasn't about her being dead. It just, I missed her. I missed the yeah. Monday call. You know, but every once in a while, I feel her do this because she used Mm. to cut my face every once in a while. But I wouldn't want to do it professionally. That's I I value that you do. Thank you. I I can come across as quite harsh because to me, I have a job to do. I have Mm -hmm. to perform a service. Mm -hmm. If Mm -hmm. a nurse is in an emergency situation Mm -hmm. and she were to become emotional or break down and not be able mm-hmm. to perform that, then mm-hmm. she would be judged. It's the same as me. Mm-hmm. And I've mm-hmm. learned over the years a lot of I'm very careful about my energy. I, I protect mm-hmm. you know I protect it. Mm-hmm. Like yep. if I have to go to bed, it's like Laurie, I have to go to bed. That's, that's it. it. She I'm does. done. Um mm-hmm. and that's the most important thing. I'm gonna tell you a story about my grandmother. This is a spooky, spooky story. Go for it's it. a lovely story. My grandmother died, I think it was 2008, and she was in her 80s. So this is my maternal grandmother, mm-hmm. and we were all called the Witches of the Forest because we all had that mm-hmm. spooky, spooky ability. Mm-hmm. Um, but she lived in the UK, and she never got to meet my children, very sadly. And I spent a lot of summers with her. And every year, so she had my children. She also had, um, I've got cousins over here who have had children. So every year she would go to the bank and she would get $10 notes. And every birthday, Easter and Christmas, all of the children got $10. 
in a card. Aww. And it was in the days when you could send cash in the mail because right. sometimes that doesn't happen now. And she, her surname was White. Mm-hmm. So she was known as Nanny White. Oh, So my children called her Snow White. Oh. Th- that's relevant. So when um, my nan passed, I was devastated because I couldn't get back to England. It was, you know, not a good time and I was really upset. And my son, who was around eight years old at the time, said to his dad, I want to go out and I want to buy Mum a present because she's sad because Snow White mm-hmm. has died. And my son wouldn't have had great reading skills at that age, Mm -hmm, good reading mm -hmm. skills, but wouldn't look at signs or what something Mm -hmm, was. mm -hmm. And they just went to a little homeware store and found a plain white bowl. Didn't have a box. And the woman said, Mm -hmm. "That's okay, I'm going to go and find a box and I'm going to wrap it up for you. Mm -hmm. Brought it home and unwrapped it. And that bowl was called the Snow White Bowl. Oh. Oh, so, and I remember that story. It was just such Aww. a lovely story. That is so sweet. And he's Love my that. intuitive. He's mm-hmm. My, mm-hmm. my that my youngest is the one that can pick up energy. Can mm-hmm. and he just he uses it in a different way. Right. Exactly. Sorry, I've got something in my eye. There we go. Could be I'm tired. <laughs> Could be you're tired. We're both tired. Yeah, what time is it there are. right now? Um, it is 11.37 p.m. 11.37, yeah. It's been a mm-hmm. long day for both of us. Apart it from has. just the work that we've had to do, we've tried recording this several times, mm-hmm. had breakdown in communication, broken communication. Um, what else have we had? There's been... Well, you had to take Boof to the vet. Yes, I've had to rush Boof to the vet. The vet. He's got colitis again because... Mm-hmm. He did caca all through the house, which he's never, ever done. As and we said. In the, yeah. So it's 39 degrees here and Buff, who loves the vet and has been going to the same vet for five years, decided to put the brakes on. He wouldn't well. go into one of the consulting rooms and he just put the brakes on and the vet said, okay, let's try this one. Maybe he doesn't like the smell of that one or something. Got him in that mm-hmm. one and he said, look, I need to take him out the back and I need to take his temperature I need to, because he's been very poorly, um, and he needs an injection because this is going to settle him a little bit. Mm -hmm. So he took him out the back. Uh, Could I get him out the back? No. He would not go to the treatment room. Um, And the two male vets just stood there and said, if we lean in to help you, he's going to go for us because Mm -hmm. Buff is very, very protective. So I had to pick up a 35-kilo dog. That's about 70 pounds, guys. It's 39 degrees. I am like just it's like a hundred degrees not, outside. And I degrees also have, with with a seventy pound yeah. dog, super fun. And I have herniated discs. Oh god, that are honey. not good at the best of times. So that was that was my exciting afternoon. Woo. Um, woo! But I came home. I've made this is only water. Very sadly, <laughs> um, this size of drink could I could I fit a gin right. and tonic in there? Right. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was you're that so was the funny. Afternoon. When I talk to you on the phone and you're pouring your ice water, you'll be like, "I'm not making gin. I'm not making gin." <laughs> it's so <laughs> funny. I'm like, you know, I didn't, I didn't think you were. And if you were, you wouldn't mind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, no, yes. not really. I, yeah. I glug two or three of those in a day. Good, good. So. Of water. Yeah. Of um, water. I need a sign on it that says this is not gin. I want one of those that has this is not gin. Right. That would be, really that would cool. be good. That would be very yeah, good. That would be really cool. This is not gin. Um, but yes. Yeah. So yeah, it's been an exciting time. And then you're off on an aeroplane. I am. I am. Actually, I will have landed and I'm hoping to go to Mysteries Bookstore and take my daughter but that was and my patrons know about it because i wrote the story um and it was i think it's a free post because i wrote the story of how i found it i was about 19 it was like 1988 so i was either 18 just turning 19 and i was on my way to covent garden because that's where i would go busk and that's how i get my (laughs) lunch money and um hey i could make like 40 quid well that I was good money. 
you know, I don't know what's 40 stopping quid you is good. Basking whilst you're over there this time. I'm going to just because my daughter doesn't want me to. <laughs> I'm going to be practicing. I'm going to have my lyrics rememorized because I haven't sung any of those songs in like two decades. So we'll see. We'll see. But anyway, I was on my way. And this is this was an intuitive moment because and and it's different than um when you think of instinct. Some people think intuition is instinct where you get the gut feeling and that's yep. like your mm-hmm. instinct, right? We're mammals, we have instincts. This was purely up here. Like when it comes into the crown, you know, it's intuition. I didn't know any of that at that time. Yeah. I was bebopping on my way. I'm in London, I'm American, do do do. Um, and all of a sudden, really, I'm she just wanted so you to dogs, look at her. No, she I'm just singing, wanted... so she joined. Uh. She joined because you know she's got Leo placements. She needs the attention. So <laughs> anyway, I'm bebopping, and all of a sudden, instead of and it was on my left side, and I've never seen well out of that side, even though there was light, right? And I got this kind of impulse to just go look like there was something to look at. And there was a different kind of street. It was like red brick with little white lace curtains in it. And in that part of London, there's nothing like that. It's all gray and white and kind of boring and stodgy. I was like, ooh, that looks like Holland and Belgium. I wonder what's down that road. I wonder. I wonder is one of my favorite. I wonder what that is. And it was a light feeling, right? I've I've learned to follow those feelings, right? I wonder. So I headed down the road. And then, I don't know, a couple blocks down, all of a sudden to my right is this purple sign with these a big plate glass window, but very pretty. Um, it's escaping me now, but, you know, the type you could sit in a reading, that, that type of beautiful window, right? Yeah. And it said mysteries in really funky lettering. So whereabouts in London is this? Well, the address when I looked it up isn't on Marlborough Road, but Marlborough Road was, is the road sign in my head. I know it's okay. around there. And so it's in between Leicester Square and Covent Garden. Okay. And, but down almost like you're going to the, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. And so it, it opened in 1986. I didn't even know that. I was like Googling it the other day. I'm like, is it still open? And so I, it was called Mysteries. And I was like, well, that looks cool. I'll go in there. And so I went in and um, had a very interesting experience. Got a very important book in my life um, from Shaki Gawain, which was called Creative Visualization. And it's a lovely way of training your mind to be good to yourself. So really good thing for an 18 or 19 year old to have. Yeah, absolutely. She passed away in 2018, but right before she died, I got an impulse to send her a thank you on Facebook. She had just joined Facebook like that year. And I, I sent her a little message and said, you know, your book saved my life because Aww. I was so embattled and all those techniques really helped me. So that's what I'm hoping to go see. I'm going to see if they'll let me interview them. Or That'd at least cool. do a little thing. I'll do it outside of the shop, you know, if they don't let me do it inside the shop. And it's where I got my first deck of tarot. That was my gateway. Um, freaked myself the hell out with that, too. Yeah. I, I couldn't use... prove why it worked. I couldn't yeah. prove why I was getting the right answers. I don't think it, it's not the cards. It was the intuition. It's not the cards. I use it as a party yeah. piece. If I'm doing a mm-hmm. reading like for a friend or something. They don't mm-hmm. quite understand that I just get it in here. Mm-hmm. It's shown to me visually. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I'll use a tarot deck just to As a foil. Them. Sorry. As, That's all right. Because right. you get the emotion from the te- deck. If you're really good, mm-hmm. you can touch the card and know what it's trying to tell you. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But I can do um, jewellery as well. So I like oh, nice. to do. Telekinesis. Yes. I like to be able to read jewelry and i get a lot of its history and it's such a tourist it and stuff like that am i a tourist mm-hmm. am i you're really such a tourist? a tourist you're such a tourist i thought i was becoming I more that. of a virgo to be fair well you're a virgo rising so you're all of it 
but you're mm-hmm. a Virgo rising with a Virgo moon in the 12th, but your Taurus sun is in the eighth house. They blend beautifully together. So it's kind of like picking out. I was making my intermediate students do that. I was like, no, no, no. You don't get to look at the big picture right now. You're teasing out all the, you're learning what the individual energy mm-hmm. is. So you can talk about the synthesis, but you got to tease it out. So it's sometimes hard to know because Taurus and Virgo are earth sign. You yes. Know. But you so, said that but yeah. you could see I was psychic in my chart. Yes. Which I've never the, known. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. In fact, I have an entire ebook on how to look at what your abilities might be based mm-hmm. off the placements in the chart. Because okay. all human beings have some degree of ability, but think about it. It's like running. Not everybody's going to be Usain Bolt. Not yeah. everybody is going to like, not everybody can sing. Not everybody can play, you know, cricket. Not everybody, everybody has different things. Now, how well developed it is naturally is, yeah. you know, is another thing. So you were born with extremely strong natural ability and then you developed and honed it. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. Which is what eh, listeners you need to do development and mentorship mm-hmm. before yeah. you go out there and start reading for people. Mm-hmm. It's really mm-hmm. important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And I was more interested, like, even though I can do a lot of things and it used to drive my, my teacher, my mentor nuts because he studied all of it to activate it. Yeah. Okay. Whereas I just had shit. <laughs> <laughs> and was trying I'm like oh there's a name for that there's a name for that there's a name for it and he was like is that isn't that hilarious though when you mm-hmm. suddenly realize sorry to interrupt but it's like it's, no you're it's a great light bulb moment when you are going through your teens and you're like but I know that and I know that and I can understand mm-hmm. that person and mm-hmm. when I say we see a soul yes I've never given two hoots about what color clothes you are you wear Mm -hmm. what car you drive what job you do what color your skin is Mm -hmm. what religion you belong Mm -hmm. to because Mm -hmm. I really see you that doesn't mean to say that I don't honor your diversity or your whatever but it means that I am truly one of those people Mm -hmm. that does see your soul and and one of the hardest things as um a psychic medium to come to terms with is that people don't love the same way you do. Yeah. They don't have the same ethics or kindness or consideration. That's one of the hardest things to ever come to terms with. Yeah. Very much so. And not, and and realizing that not everybody does see people's souls. No, you know, not everyone and does gets see us into trouble, souls. and and people don't always live up to that soul that is beautiful and shiny and holds all this amazing, mm-hmm. you know. And and sometimes they don't, and it may not even be their lifetime too. No, it, it, that's that's true. But when you're in the sort of situation mm-hmm. that I am in, and maybe you have been in, when you want somebody to see your soul the way that you see theirs, yeah, and to validate happen. you in that way. Mm-hmm. It's quite heartbreaking. It is. I'm not here to give you a sob story. I'm just (laughs) No, but no, I get it. But that's also one of the ways I know when somebody's a real spiritual teacher or practitioner and when they're not. Because if people can't see this and what all is here and they're Mm -hmm. just assuming I'm a content creator or something, um, then I know they're not sensitive at all. Yeah. Because yeah. there's a lot there. Same with you. Like when I saw you, I was like, oh, okay, cool. I want to know her. Yes, she's the real deal. Yes. It wasn't that your predictions were accurate, which was cool. And I like that ours lined up. But I went, even through the filter. <laughs> even like, through the filter. That filter that is going to be the bane of my life. I love that <laughs> Because filter. nobody wants me to get rid of it. You know, it was funny because I was like, oh, damn, I wish I would have thought of doing that. And then I was like, well, it wasn't on TikTok when... It wasn't on TikTok, but yeah, I put it on there and so many people are judgy because of the filter, but it just sort of proves my point. If you can't take the messages I give because they're not from me and not judge me for my appearance, then that's on Mm -hmm. you. You're the one that's missing out. Um, And I'm okay with it. I didn't come on TikTok to be famous. I came on TikTok. No, I didn't either. To 
annoyed that like to call out the bullshitters. Because... You know, it's funny. I <laughs> I went on to protest Trump and okay. um because he wanted to ban the app. Now he's saying don't ban the app. Like pick pick a position, dude. But oh, I don't um, think he knows what day of the week it is, let alone what position to pick. No, be. no, he doesn't. But um then when I saw all the information, I was like, oh, and I knew how bad it was out there with astrology because I'd seen it on Reddit and other places because I was posting on Reddit, right? Right. Okay. And so I was already educating young people because I was really scared with the 2020. They thought they were failing. They thought they had screwed up their lives. They had, And I'm like, guys, we're in the biggest time of change in human history in 4,500 years. Mm -hmm. You're doing nothing wrong. You're just fine. Because a lot of them just got really thrown. And I was like, oh, my God, those poor babies. You know, and yeah, kids, 25, you know, I don't know. But we old. So, <laughs> so yeah. I went on to just. You know, one of my very first TikToks, I said, hey, I'd love to paint you um, a beautiful picture that everything's going to be okay next year. It's not going to be. It's a really bumpy ride for a really long time. And I was much more forthright than I am now. I've scaled back from that when I had like two people watching my videos <laughs> because I didn't think anybody was going to buy it. It was a teenager's app. I was in my fifties. Why would anybody, you know, I was yeah. like, they're not going to listen to me. And yeah. they did, you know, it was crazy. So, and I scaled back over time because people, I can be really intense as you've noticed. Um, but it's sometimes you have to, like, I know I can be intense. I lost my first account. I had a huge, following and i lost my first account because i was truthful some people don't yeah. like the truth people do not like the truth they don't like people the truth. do not now in readings i oh. rarely um i really have a hard time like and honestly nine times out of ten everything's going to be fine and people are worrying over nothing once in a while i get a reading where i have to tell somebody okay it's going to be hard and, and it ends here. And this is how you go through this. You know, it, it's, I hate those ones. Cause I want to, I want to kiss it, make it better. Right. But they're just going through this big, we all have a cycle in life where there's. Yeah. We have a happen. choice though. We can give comfort readings or mm -hmm. we can give real readings. Mm -hmm. And so many people want the comfort readings, but they don't grow from those. I can go on to any reading that I do and go, there, there, love, it's going to be okay. It's yeah. not going to help anyone. Well, no, and it can honestly cause a lot of damage. I see oh, that I've on TikTok a lot. It. I have seen mm -hmm. and picked up the pieces of the damage caused by people that just want to sell a fairy tale. I've had... And, and, you know, part of it's on them. It's not just on, on the client. It's not just the psychic because they continually go back to that psychic because that mm -hmm. psychic's told them that somebody that's treated them appallingly that they are madly in love mm -hmm. with is mm -hmm. going to come back into their lives. Mm -hmm. They're the twin flames. <laughs> well, there's some there of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The twin flames, which is The twin terrible. flames. And people are waiting for years for their twin mm -hmm. flame to come back to them. I'm like, they're just, no. just damaging. Or, you know, if you just sit and think positive, things will change. And once you recognize there's a problem, you have to do something about it and you have yeah. to make decisions. Um, and sometimes there's all you can do. The best decision is to just ride out the storm. Like it's like, you know, know I'm sorry you're in a toxic end. job. Yeah, I know you're in a toxic job situation. I know you want out. But if you quit your job right now, it's going to be the worst thing you ever did rage apply don't rage quit because your transits don't look good for this if you quit your job you're gonna really really regret it right now and i hate giving that because i'm the first person to say yeah go be free um but if it's the wrong thing you know um and if somebody uh, occasionally i don't know sometimes i i don't yell at my clients very often but not a while ago, I had a, a person in domestic violence situation, and they weren't hearing me. Mm -hmm. And I finally just like screamed at them, "You are in danger!" 
You well, need to get out now because I can feel the energy besides the astrology. I can feel the energy coming mm-hmm. in the possibility. So it's almost like I'm traveling through time and dimensional space and feeling the outcomes. And it's really trippy and there's no way for me to explain it other than that. And I'm feeling these like, oh, oh energy that's why i get tired because yeah. yes there's the mental side there's of the it mental where it's side, math, we are and it's then, energy workers people don't understand that energy yeah. workers is a job it's like running a marathon a it single is. reading um can be like running a marathon that's why i limit my readings mm-hmm. because otherwise I'm, i don't have a life i am a zombie mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I've had people that I've yelled at purely. Yeah. Well, I've I've only ever had two, and I think I phoned you up once and said, "You did." I've just yelled at a client, and I've never yelled at a client, but I didn't know what else to do. Um, but she had mm-hmm. been drinking. She was oh. not listening. She was truculent, yeah. and yeah. she was, you know. And I actually did. Re- I did eighty percent of the reading. Mm-hmm. But it was not good enough. It was like, well, what else? What else? What else? And I just refunded her. Yeah, um, I, I you're but, nicer than I am because mm-hmm. I, at that point she's taken up my time. Yeah, and I, 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 I'm very much a stickler on this. I cannot get my time back. I am not a not. I know, and I, yeah. Remember that, and you need to hear this, listeners. If you're taking up our time, yeah, that is not cool. And I. If I knew somebody was inebriated, and you probably didn't know right away, but if I knew somebody was inebriated, I would cut them loose and just say, hey, you need to reschedule. I would not. If they show up drunk, it's not a refund. That's on them. And I should have done that. Um, That's okay. But it was as the time went by, I could hear her voice slurring. Mm -hmm. She was really, Mm -hmm. she wanted to hear what she wanted to hear. She did not want to hear what spirit had to say. And it was like I brought her father through. And mm-hmm. she still wasn't happy with the messages he'd given. She And then she said, what else has he got to say? What else has he got to say? What else has he got to say? And she just kept pushing mm-hmm. and pushing. And I ended up just yelling at her. Um, yeah. And I don't I had a, do that. I had one like that. Yeah, yeah. I had one that snuck up on me because they didn't. And I don't know if they had just started drinking before the reading and the alcohol mm-hmm. kicked in and their words started slurring. But. Yeah. I was so shattered by the end of it because, and it was an important lesson for me because I, by the, I, it was like getting, it was like a deer in the headlights. It's, it's like you're, you're the just energy. Hit. You can't mm-hmm. get through that energy. If somebody's Mm-mm. been, and this is another lesson. If yeah, you don't come to me do stoned. Re- don't come stoned, to me drunk. Don't and drunk and be Mm-mm. ready for the reading. Don't come to me yelling mm-hmm. at your kids that they've got to do X, Y, Z, so you can sit down quietly. Mm-hmm. But um, we prepare ourselves before a reading i spend 10 15 minutes making mm-hmm. sure that i've got you know everything mm-hmm. i need setting my intentions for the reading all of that mm-hmm. and then i will phone you and if and the thing is that because i say to people and it's probably my mistake i don't need you to i don't want to know anything i'm just going to jump right in and then of course i don't mm-hmm. hear their voice but when you suddenly mm-hmm. hit that energy it is like an energetic it, wall, and it's the it's same a sort Mack of truck. Yeah, you're yep. just like bonk. And it's the same mm-hmm. if somebody is, uh, I suppose, doubtful, doubtful mm-hmm. or angry, or mm-hmm. have just had a fight with your boyfriend, or mm-hmm. you're scattered, scattered, nervous. We just hit this truck. We hit the truck, and mm-hmm. we can't give you the information. Um, mm-hmm. and if, if I'm giving you validation after validation and you're going, no, 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 mm-hmm. then I'm going to go, I'm going to just, if it's the first five minutes and I'm not getting a connection and it's a genuine reading, I right. will refund. That's different. That's mm-hmm. different. But I have had someone, I've refunded someone and we've tried twice. So I'll reschedule and mm-hmm. on the, the, and I'm like, I just, I'm not, I'm sorry. I'm not getting anything because you're saying no to everything I'm giving you then I can't read for you. Mm-mm. I then get an email a week later saying, I've just realized what you were saying, blah, 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 blah. You were completely right. I should have said yes. Well, you've just now, wait, you've now got to wait another three months to get a reading with me. Right, right. And see, with astrology, I don't have a problem with receptivity. You can come in skeptic, angry, whatever. Kids can be running and screaming in the background. I'm not, that's not going to, no. It, any intuitive extra that might come in, might not in the same way but the astrology will happen right mm-hmm. yeah um 
but that that one that was really inebriated it was so triggering because it was like some past experiences and it just threw me it was a great experience because my apprentices were in training at the time and i had them debrief me because i was rattled i was i was in tears afterwards it was just it was really icky and um and they got to see you know, this person, they thought, you know, whoa, she's been doing this for three decades. And she's like all this be emotionally really shaken by a reading. I said, well, guys, this doesn't happen very often. But when it does, we need to debrief. We need to talk to somebody about it. And I'm like, you know, it was the energy. The reading itself was fine. They didn't like what I had to say because they were having to be accountable in their life. And obviously they had a hard time with that. By the yeah. way, I don't care if you drink on your own time and I don't care if you do recreational drugs. I honestly oh, don't yeah, care what you do with your life. Me. Just don't it's do it on my res- time. Yeah, respect the time, respect the situation. I think We're that's really real important. people. Mm-hmm. We're real people. And if mm-hmm. you're – when I go into a reading, every single bit of my energy is focused on you 100%. your loved ones what spirit are saying what your mm-hmm. spirit guides are saying whichever reading you're having mm-hmm. i expect the same if your energy isn't focused back mm-hmm. you're not going to get that no. energetic exchange no. that we really need yeah. um, you don't do recordings do you i don't know yeah see so you really have to pay attention with matilda I do recordings because a lot of times I'm coming at you so fast. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. This is happening. This is happening. This day, this day, this is, you got to watch this. You got to do it this way mm-hmm. that you'll hear like a quarter of it. So I do recordings and I get them to clients. Um, Maybe it's something I have to look at, but I've been advised by another mm-hmm. working psychic medium mm-hmm. who's very well known not to, mm-hmm. but to get people to take notes. Right. And in astrology, we often do offer it just because there's so many days, but I'm also very careful about liability and how I speak. So um, we never make promises. I always let you know it's likelihood. It's possible. You know, it's Mm -hmm. not set in stone. And we don't make promises either because. No. You've got to take affirmative action. Yeah. If, and I always tell people, like, if I see, like, a, a good luck transit, I'm like, here's the deal. If you sit down and you write affirmations, and I have no problem with affirmations, I use them myself. But if all you do is write those down and sit and wish on a star, you're going to find that five bucks. You'll find that five bucks you left in your winter jacket. And that's a great yeah. day. But if you take action, you could find a job that makes $20,000 more a year. And this is people have to realize that affirmations – are really really good they lift the energy of your manifesting yes and but but what happens is the manifesting is not going to drop it from the sky for for Mm -hmm. you they're going to Mm -hmm. put the opportunities on your pathway yeah if you if one more per like i love all my clients but i get asked a common question when am i going to meet my the one i'm going to spend the rest of my life with when you leave the house right do you, why do you just want one? Yeah, why do you just want one? I mean, really? Why can't you have one for every day of the week? I want one that cooks, one that cleans, one that does the ironing. One that takes the dogs out. Yeah. I've got the one that carries the groceries. Ah, uh, you have one of those. I do. And he would do, you know, I, he would do other cool stuff. He's my driver. Aww, mm-hmm. that's true he drives love. Miss Daisy. That's what he says, driving Miss Daisy. <laughs> I've told you before who I'm expecting a call from. I know. I will, I will drop by Johnny Depp's place and say, hey, dude, <laughs> Matilda's been waiting. Why haven't you called her? I have been waiting her? for him to call me for so long now. Right back to Benny and June days. Right, that was good. Benny and June was good. That was a good movie. That was a good movie. So, yeah, I'm, I've am i been waiting. He's my twin flame. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean. Do you want to tell him? I mean. I'm going to, for sure. I'm going to be like, hey, there's this chick in Australia named Matilda, and she is convinced she is your twin flame. Oh, did you ever see that? He'll be all over made? that. Somebody called me so. delusional. And I said, oh. yeah, my guides say I'm delusional all the time, especially when I tell them I'm going to marry to Johnny Depp. 
<laughs> I love that. <laughs> you know, one of the reasons I harp so much on people talking about karma in a in a very uneducated way, yeah. um, and things like twin flames and karmic relationships is because when I was in my 20s and all of this started coming at me and I started studying it, trust me, there was a lot of bad information then too. Um, yeah. When I started doing synastry, which is relationship astrology, and I was looking at my then husband's and it was a very dysfunctional relationship. There was a lot of connection between the two of us. There was all the chemistry in the world. We were that couple. We were very pretty. We were very educated. We had everything. People were very shocked when it didn't work out because on on the surface, everything on the surface. was great. However, yeah. we had a lot of problems. And um, I had a lot of psychological healing I needed to do, but he had even more. And he is no longer with us because of the stuff that was going on. Um, And I was looking for, like, if he was mean to me, was it because of a past life? If he was cruel to me i must have you know i the the damage i had gone through as a young person like in my childhood already had me take on too much responsibility for things that had nothing to do with me yeah mm -hmm. um and so that's why i harp on it it does not mean i don't like relationships it doesn't mean i don't believe in love i, I love i love real love yeah but abuse mass lot of love yeah is not it a lot of people will not realize that they are in an abusive or toxic situation because yeah. some fake psychic, whether it is on a phone line because there's far too many of those, mm -hmm. or whether it is on um, TikTok and they've said it's a yeah. soul contract or it's a karmic relationship or it's a twin yeah. flame, and you've got people living in DV situations or yeah. toxic situations, yeah. thinking that they can change somebody or yeah. they're going if to change can, because they really love, love them. If I them, if I love them hard enough. Yeah. If I and love them enough. It's very I, sad mm -hmm. when somebody says they behave that way because they love you so much they can't cope with their own emotions. Oh, yeah, that's bullshit. That's so dangerous and it's it's mm -hmm. it's beyond dangerous and puts a it's, lot of people yeah. at risk. Um, and I, I got this yeah. close to dying. This I'm so close. sorry. Yeah, no, it was yeah. ugly. Was his soul gorgeous? Oh, God, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he had I a have lot my of own problems. Story. Yeah. I have yeah. my own story of a situation where mm -hmm. I was told that somebody in my life was my happy ever after and my twin flame, mm -hmm. and he was a narcissistic sociopath that treated mm -hmm. me appallingly. Luckily, I got out very early. I'm yep. not talking about my ex-husband because he's a very kind human yeah, you're being. Still just friends. We're still friends. Yeah. Just because mm -hmm. we are not in a relationship mm -hmm. doesn't mean to say I don't love him. Um, mm -hmm. He's not my partner. But um, that I'm not talking. Cockatiels. Oh, cockatiels. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's we feeding have a flock time. Of we have yeah. a flock of parrots that flies out in the afternoon. They've just. There must be something outside mm -hmm. my office mm -hmm. that they've found or tormenting a cat or something. Oh, that's what they often do. So yeah, I've been through a very similar situation mm -hmm. that made me doubt who I was. Yeah, but it put me on the pathway that I am on. Right. And, and it can, and, and mine did too. Yeah. And Metaphysical that's, an that's another episode's mm -hmm. worth of topic. Yeah. Of yeah. Dating. We should cover that. Why don't we cover that next time? Yeah. Shall I we? actually, yeah. I think um, dating mm -hmm. and being psychic medium astrologer on dating in mm -hmm. our 40s. Gee, have I got some stories for you. I was in my 50s when I started dating. But I, was in but I have 40s. a funny one. I have a mm. funny one. But I was in my 40s and I have not been on a date for three years. Oh, I don't blame you. I I tried and then I stopped because it was like I met every I married guy to. known to man and I was like, what the hell? Oh, my God, they're all um, married. I had two married men in, in a row try and date yeah. me. Um, and I live in a small town now. Oh, and great. I'm telling you, the pickings are slim. When I tell you the picking, oh, it's not a small town. It is classed as a regional city. But the pickings are slim and the mm -hmm. effort is low. And I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I'm a high effort girl. And I'm not talking about 
fancy dinners and spending mm-hmm. money on me. I'm talking about make a bloody effort. Yeah, show up. Show up. And mm-hmm. otherwise I'm not interested because I'm worth yeah. it. I know what I bring to the table. Show me what you've got. Exactly. I'm right with you. But yeah. that's about it for today. I think that's all we got, but we will next next week. Why don't we do the relationships one? Because and I dating, think that would that be, could really be hilarious. I, I've, I've got I've, some fun stories. I've got some fun stories too. Just might not always be clean, but I do have some very good stories. And don't forget to send us your questions. Yes, send us your questions to sassysears at gmail.com. Yay! <laughs>